Now that we have the data entered into this one and this two, these would be our x's and these would be our y's. Uh, let's see like this scatter plot, like we saw here. You can get the calculation on that scatter plot. And where do we see the scatter plot? We see it on the graph. We don't see anything. Okay. There's a couple of reasons for that. First, look at the look at the points that are on here, like 16 comma 41. Imagine you go to put that point on this graph. What what difficulty are you going to have with that? Plotting 16 comma 41. Danielle? It's off the graph. This is 10. If you count them off, that's 10. 16 is over here somewhere. 41 is, forget it, it's way up there. Okay. So we need to move our focus to where these data points would be. Right? So we're going to go into the settings and change where the left side of the screen is, where the right side of the screen is, where the bottom of the screen is, and where the top of the screen is. Okay? So, um, let's, let's make a decision about that, where, where those places should be. So if we want this, these data points to fit on our screen, let's decide what where the screen should be. Okay. Let's look at these data points and decide uh, where should the left side of the screen be? Like, what's the smallest x value that we should have on our screen? Five. Okay. Because there you go, right? That x value is the lowest. Now, if we make it exactly by when that point will be like on the scooch or on the very far side of the screen. So we'll make it 4 so that 5 will be like over here on a little bit over on the edge of the screen. So, what do you think? How far over should we go on the right side of the screen? is the y, these are the y values, right? So what we're trying to decide is the left side of the screen should be as small as 4, and the right side of the screen, which is still the x value, should go up to where? 23? How about 24? Just so that 23 won't be right on the edge of the screen. Okay, so 24. So from 4 to 24, so then we get 5 to 23, no problem. How about the y? Should go from here to there, what should we do with that? Down here? What? Seven? That's seven. These are the y values. It's the smallest y value is seven. So let's do uh, six, just below seven. So you see seven on the screen, no problem. And up here, how high should we go? Let's, do, let's just add one more. Uh, so, this is so we don't we don't want these axes. We want to set it so that it's like this. We want the left side of the screen to be four, the right side of the screen to be 24. We want the bottom side of the screen to be at six, and the top to be at 16. Let me show you how to do that. Go here. Right now we're at the graph. We want to change the window of the graph, so we go into the window. X min. That's the minimum x value. The smallest x value. What's that going to be? Four. Four there. What are you going to put for our x maximum? What's that? 24, yeah, go all the way to 24. We'll go down to the scale, we won't match the scale. We'll start with the minimum y value, Richard. Minimum y value we want to put in. We already decided this right here because you see this y value of 7? Right. This, this represents a point on the graph, 5 comma 7. And 7 is the smallest y value that there is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go just below that, go to 6.
how about the maximum y value? What's the maximum y value we're going to put for our window? 64. So. so now we're going to go back to the graph. Now the graph is going to be set to these values. This x, you know, the left x and the right x and the bottom line. But I still don't see any points. So we, you do? Yeah. Okay, because your calculator has it down to it, but we're not. You, get, you don't see the points, or if you see the points, great. If you don't see the points, it's because we haven't turned the points on. We haven't turned them on. Okay, here's how we turn them on. Here we see the graph. Here we can set the window. Here we can zoom in on things. Here is where like, we kind of control what goes on to the graph. We can, hit, we can enter equations here. We can enter the equation of y, y equals mx plus t. We can enter any equation with x in it, and it'll graph it. It shows the graph. The data points, just the scatter plot stuff, is up here. You can see they're all turned off right now because none of them are highlighted. So we'll go up here and press enter. Now it's highlighted. Okay. To see like all the settings of, of this guy, we can go second, and you'll see stat plot right here. <coughs> so we're, we're doing plot one. We make sure the settings are correct. The settings may be changed by some of these calculators. We make sure that they're all correct. We're not going to have any issues. Okay. We definitely want it on because we want it to graph the, the scatter plot. What kind of a graph do we want? We want a scatter plot. So that's good. We don't want it to connect them. We don't want it to make a histogram. We don't want to make a box and whisker or anything like that. We want it to be just the scatter plot. Yeah. What's that? To get to the screen. Okay, second time here. Second? Let me select plot one. There are all the same. When turn on, we have the scatter plot. Our x's are going to come from this one, the y's are going to come from this two. This is where we change that. We're doing a different message to change which list we use. Okay? And mark means like what kind of a, of a shape we want to use in the top point. And those little squares are nice and easy. Right? So we can see Not seeing this. Is anybody seeing more than this? Oh, 
uh, make sure the platform is on. I've already made a video about how to do all this, so you can watch it and uh, apply it to all of the problems that you need to do. Okay. Um, <coughs> so next, uh, we're going to go into uh, the main screen. This is just where you do your presentation and you know, regular app stuff. So just go second. And then right above mode is quit. Oh, you back out to that main screen. Well, good on that main screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is called a linear regression. What does the word regression mean? It has something to do with that word. But regression, I don't know. It sounds like that's same. Regression, if you regress, you can look it up on your phone. I know you all of you trying to hide your phones from me, Dad. Well, regressing basically means to go back. Yeah, that means to go back. Okay? It's like one of the basic SDS tests. Sounds good to me. So, to regress means to go back. So, regression means like going back. We're taking the data kind of back to a line. And we're kind of making all the data go back and fit into a line. Okay? So linear regression means we're going to make all the data regress into a linear function. We can make this fit any function, any kind of function that we want, pretty much. We can make it fit quadratic functions and, and trig functions and all sorts of functions that you guys have not dealt a whole lot with. And mm -hmm. We're going to fit it to mm -hmm. linear. And that's what, that's what seems to make sense because this data seems to be in the shape of a line. If it was more curved, we would maybe want to use a different regression. But we're going to use linear regression. Here's how we do the regression. Go to that stack window where we, where we, what was the last thing we did on this screen? We did the edit, we went into the list, and we entered our x and our y's. Now we're going to go over to calculate, and you see this linear regression, which is. <laughs> Can someone help Sarah out and show her what we just Sorry, did? The one button you push. Okay. So we're going to do a linear regression, and what it's saying here is it's going to give us the equation in this way. A, X, plus B. So it's going to tell us what A is and tell us what B is. Okay? And just to remind you, before we do this real quick, if I go into the Y equal, I can put in the equation I want. I can put in 5X plus uh, 60. Uh, 5x plus, let's go with 7 instead of 60. Okay, so there's, the, there's the, the linear equation 5x plus 7. Yeah, it has a slope of 5 and the y intercept is 7 and 7 is way back in the so We're going to find the equation of the line and we're going to want to put it in here so that it goes right through all those data points. So let's figure that out and come back. Uh, Alright, so we're going to go to linear regression, we're going to hit enter. Okay. It's all set up. It knows, well it's going to assume that you want to take your x's from list 1 and your y's from list 2. That's what we set it up to do. And we're going to, uh, well it's just going to tell us what a and b are. Okay. Press enter. It tells us that a is 3.11 in all those, and, and b, the y-intercept, right? B, this guy right here is the y-intercept, negative 10.326, and so on. Okay. So, yes? Uh, what is this? 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 How close your data is to that one, or that regression that you do. The closer to 1 r squared is, the closer your original data was to being in a line. Oh, so this just has like, it's telling me to like, reset all the settings. Yes. Alright, um, so I click 
put it on second stat and I don't have the option. Not second stat, just stat. Oh. Oh, I got it now. We all seeing this now? We got the A and B? Okay, let's walk through this again, everybody. Where do we find the linear regression option? Stat. Okay, so if you stat over to calc, down towards the linear regression, and press enter again. Got it? Okay. Um, so, what does all that mean? A is this number, B is this number. If I want to see this line on the graph with all those points, how do I do that? If you press graph, all we're going to see, the only thing we told the graph to have on it is those points. Uh, no, that's a good guess, but no, it's, we're not going to like turn on that equation. Yeah, go to the equation screen, and then put in that, but hold on, there's a new one. Just, I want you to know that that's what you're supposed to have there. Okay? You can get the calculator to automatically put those numbers into the y1. Okay? So you find that one, you got? So instead of having to enter 3.11x minus 10 point, I don't know what 10 point what it was, but instead of having to enter that uh, by hand, we can have the calculator do that automatically. So here we go. Back, we're going to do the linear regression again. Okay, with one extra bit. We're going to go over the calculate. We're going to do the linear regression again. Ready to go. Now the next thing we're going to do is tell it to put this thing into the y1. So you should be right here, ready to press enter, but not quite pressing enter. Yes? Okay, so you press stat. Move over to count. Down to linear regression. And, and press enter and take it, but don't press enter again, but just wait. Okay. Everybody there? On the main screen with linear regression, ready to fire? It should be just one. Can you tell me how it can be in there? The thing is, with those data points, there's lots of things you can do. So if it's, if all it ever does is take three points and turn them into lines, then you're limited to what you can do. Can you just draw a graph and plot those points on the ground and call it good? What? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know how to make something easy that you don't know what you're talking about. So you want to go
y1. So where we, like, we're going to put y1 right there. That's all we need to put. Where do we find it? We press this guy right here, stands for variables. Okay, we're going to go over here to the y variables. We're going to press the right arrow. ready to put this equation, like these numbers into the equation, and put it into y1. So now when we press enter, it'll look just like this, but then when we go into y equals 2, we'll see all those numbers plugged in for it, except for our current R, and then we can the actual equation. There it gives us those, but we can go in here, it's all in. So now we have this uh, this equation that, given a body length of a bird, it should tell you what the the uh, wingspan is. Okay. And so we had just talked about predicting maybe if a if a bird had a, a body length of, of 15, because there is no 15. So if I had a body length of 15, what would its wingspan be? That's what we're going to use this equation for. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So I want to put 15 like. I'm going to go to 15, and I want to see what is the y value. What 15 is the y value represents the mean span of this curve. Okay. So, if you're looking up here, paying attention, you see what I'm about to do. When you press trace, okay, 
Now trace, if I, if, if I move left and right, you see how I'm jumping to the different data points? But I don't, I don't really care about the data points. I don't want to jump around on the data points. I want to be on the line. Okay. So if I press down, I change, well, it changes the options of where my cursor is going to be. We have the data points, and I want it to be on the line. So I press down. And now my cursor is on the line. I can move my cursor left and right. And if I wanted to say, what if I have a body length of 15? If Bert has a body length of 15? You can see if I move left and right, the x value changes. And it stops at 14. It will stop at 15. Oh, it doesn't stop at 15. You see, like it jumps from 14.8 to 15.06. But I want to put exactly 15 in there. That's an easy thing to do. When trace is turned on, and you can see that cursor, you just press 15. X is 15. You press enter. So the wingspan of a bird is a 15. I don't even know what this is measured in. Uh, I don't know what it's measured in. So for a bird that's 15 inches long, it'll have a wingspan of 36.33 inches. Okay. You got that? Yes. What kind of prediction was that? Remember we talked about two different kinds? Interpolation or extrapolation? Interpolation because it's within the data that we already have. It's between the lowest and the highest bits of data. So now let's do some extrapolation. What's the value of x that would be extrapolation? Outside of the data. 30. 30. Right? We want to go outside. We want to say, if I have looked at these birds, these smaller birds, and I want to make a prediction about a bigger bird and all of those, uh, let's see what would happen when we do that. We're going to get an error. Okay. Why do you think we got an error? off the graph, so we need to change the screen so that that line will be shown on the graph. Okay? We could do that a few different ways. We could go uh, back into the window. We could change the window so that we would get that. We can we can just zoom out from where we currently are. We can go zoom, zoom out, go down to zoom out, and press enter. And this little cursor is like, where do you want the center of the zoomed out screen to be? Probably cover up. So if we press trace again and we press 30, I don't know what just happened. Trace, 30, trace. Oh, I need to go up to get on my line. So now I press 30, 82.99. Remember, when we first press trace, remember it starts out on the data points. We want to jump off the data points onto the line, so press up or down. Once you press up, you can see now I'm on the line. And now when I move left and right, I'm, my cursor is on the line. And now I can press 30, make a prediction about 30, 25, make a prediction about 25, bird of length 25, wingspan of 67.
Thank you. 